people feel that fractions are confusing and that oh, I just don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why you do this versus that. So one of the things that can help us better understand how fractions relate to one another is by having a diagram like this that lets us physically see and have the fractions represented to understand how they can balance out and be equivalent. What equivalent means is what the amount being represented is the same, even though it might look different. So you might have four quarters and one dollar. They're equivalent. It's the same value just being expressed in two different ways. So that same can be applied here, and this lets us model it out. Each one of these, because as we see, each one of these strips is the same distance across as one hole. So these are different ways of modeling one hole. If I have one hole and I break it into four parts, there are four equal pieces. Each one of them is worth one fourth. I have six equal sized pieces, so six sixths, six pieces out of six make up one whole. That's easy when it's a whole number, but what about other fractions? So if I start with one half, I want to know what other combinations of parts also equ equates to this same distance. So when I travel down my grid, I see that two of the one fourths is also half the distance across. So that means two fourths is equivalent to one half. If I continue down, this three pieces of the six also works out to cover that same half distance. Four eighths and five tenths. Now, how do I know for sure, actually? I, I, I can see it here, but I can also prove it mathematically. If I have a 5 and I have a 10, I think of what number can I divide out of 5 that I can also divide out of 10? Well, 5 times 1 creates 5, and 5 times 2 creates 10. So that means they have a shared factor of 5 that when I divide it out, 5 divided by 5 is 1, 10 divided by 5 is 2. When I simplify each one of these larger fractions, they turn into 1 half. So I'm able to prove that 5 tenths is equivalent to 1 half, not only physically, but also mathematically. So this is the concept behind simplifying. You're taking out a shared value to shrink it down. It's easier to work with one of two pieces than it is at with five of ten pieces. Sometimes we do need to make fractions bigger, um, and, and we can do that, but as our final answers in fractions, when dealing with them, we always want them simplified, which means we shrink them down to their lowest possible terms. Okay. So we can also find a ways that a lot of other fractions interact with one another. So if I look down at one-fourth even. What is equivalent to one-fourth? So if I travel down here, I notice that two of these eighths equaled the same distance or the same size as one-fourth. And if I divided the two and the eight by their common factor, I can divide out two. I can divide out two from eight, so I'm left with one-fourth. That proves mathematically that these are the same. Now say I thought I was maybe looking and I thought, oh, two out of the six looks about the same. So maybe I try one-fourth and I think it's equivalent to two-sixths. Well, I know that with two and six, they have a shared factor of two. So when I divide two out of both terms, I'm left with one-third. Oh, that's not the same as one-fourth, so I was wrong. It didn't cover the same space. So whenever you're not sure if they're equivalent or not, try shrinking them down and finding out. Now we can also do this with larger fractions that don't have one for the numerator. So if I look at two-thirds, this is the distance. As I travel down, it looks like four of these six pieces is equivalent, and as I keep going down, it also looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, six 
of the 9 is equivalent. Again, I can prove that by finding the common factor I can divide out of 6 and 9, which is 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So it takes back, it goes back to that original baseline fraction. So this is all simplifying is, okay? Um, if I happen to have a, sometime when we're working with fractions, I have, let's go with 3 fourths. 3 fourths is nice and simple, but say I need more pieces. I need to break this up. I need to make this more. So I need maybe twice as many pieces. So in order to create a fraction that's larger, I have to multiply the bottom by whatever my desired value is to raise to a higher term. So 4 times 2 is 8. The rule with fractions is what you do to one half of it, you have to do to the other half. So if I adjusted the bottom by multiplying by 2, it means I have to adjust the top by multiplying by 2 so that I am still representing the exact same set of values. So based on this, if I have 3 fourths, that would be here, that means I should be able to go down to the 8 6 or go down to the 1 8 and count over 6 and have it represent the same value 1 2 3 4 5 6 so my line is there if I move that up 1 2 3 3 fourths is equivalent to 6 eighths so this is adding subtracting equivalent fractions all that stuff um, in a nutshell. So use a tool like this to help you be able to understand and manipulate what the fractions are asking you to calculate and how they relate to one another.